just in case you forgot, 2025 is a massive year for Tesla and will lay the foundation for a decade plus of phenomenal growth. Strangely absent from most conversations from analysts covering Tesla at the moment is literally everything Tesla's doing this year. But hey, here's a reminder from Tesla's VP of vehicle engineering, Lars. There's a lot of new vehicles coming out, you know, in, in that regard. We've got the new lower cost models this, this you know, this summer. It's like just, there's a lot, there's a lot of changes going on at Tesla this year in terms of our lineup. And, you know, it's, it's hard to like, keep it all straight but it's exciting though, it's super right? exciting you know so there we have it again i don't know what it is it just seems like people have forgotten or just don't believe tesla multiple new more affordable tesla vehicles and a production this year right around the same time as tesla's robot taxi service launches in austin and many of the very intelligent people who wear suits therefore obviously should be trusted and respected by default are of the belief that tesla should partner with uber to launch their robo taxi service because uber will bring a lot of value to the table and it turns out tesla and uber have in fact had a conversation but i don't think it ends the way many of these experts would have expected let's listen to what uber's ceo said about this discussion i mentioned sort of flippantly you know a, a potential deal with elon musk and, and robo taxi robo taxi we're told will launch in theory th th this year it does make sense that somebody like you and elon musk would co-join and unite behind this, this AV venture. We certainly think it makes a ton of economic sense in that what we bring is demand to the AV ecosystem uh, when demand often is, is quite variable. So we're able to have a, call a base load of AV demand. These cars are driving 20, 22 hours a day, and then we're able to complement that with human drivers as well. Uh, we would love to have Tesla's content on the network. To, there are about 150,000 drivers now who drive Teslas. Two weeks ago, I got into Tesla Uber, and, and he was using FSD. The driver was using mm -hmm. FSD. I asked him, when do you use it? When do you not use it? He's like, it's great. It kind of takes the edge off. Some of his passengers don't like it. Some do. So for us to turn those Teslas into autonomous Teslas when it's superhuman safe would be terrific. Have you had you know, a serious conversation with him? Have, do you interact with him? Is it one of the parts of the conversation? I, I've, had, had? I've had conversations with him at this point. They want to build it alone. So to some extent, in Austin, we and Waymo will be competing with uh, Tesla uh, when they launch. And, you know, let's see. The life is long, but we would love to partner with them. Imagine my shock. Tesla not interested in partnering with Uber. The company has demonstrated a history of being adamant that vertical integration is the way forward. A company that has successfully solved countless, incredibly difficult problems on their own without partners, without help across multiple domains. So we do now have confirmation. Uber have asked Tesla, would you like to partner? Tesla said, nah, fuck off, mate. Why would we? Of course, I told you this would happen, right? People have been talking about this for a better part of a year or two. I said, bro, wh why? There's no point. Of course, there is an argument as to why Tesla would want to partner with Uber. It's not a compelling argument. And I do have to say, Uber, the company, in big trouble over the long term as Tesla massively scales their fleet of robot taxis. So Merritt posted this news, a quote from Uber's CEO, exactly what we've just seen. Gary Black asks, why would Tesla be able to offer autonomous rides way cheaper than Uber? when 10 to 12 other auto manufacturers will be able to offer autonomous rides on the Uber app. It's not like Tesla will be the only autonomous option out there, just like Tesla is not the only EV maker. God, I've got a lot to say on this. First of all, 10 to 12 other automotive manufacturers offering autonomy. Whose software are they going to be running? Because I'm not aware of 10 to 12 other automotive manufacturers that are even pursuing this, let alone have a chance of successfully deploying autonomous vehicles at scale. How many of them will be licensing Tesla's FSD? But forget that. Let's assume that there's a magic solve autonomy button. How many of these automotive manufacturers can produce a vehicle that's as efficient? This is important because the cost to recharge, how far you go per charge per kilowatt hour in the battery pack really matters a lot. Who has the most efficient powertrains? And even more importantly, who can actually make the hardware, the vehicles themselves, at the lowest cost? Because if we do assume there's a magic solve autonomy button and everyone has autonomy, 10 to 12 other companies can just magically have autonomy just as good as Tesla, then what's really going to make the difference is how much they can manufacture the actual vehicle auto manufacture as in manufacture the auto who can do that at the lowest price point because they'll then be able to offer the lowest cost per mile and to gary's point it's not like tesla will be the only autonomous option out there just like tesla is not the only ev maker out there you know i can count on literally half a hand the number of companies today making any money at all selling electric vehicles to consumers there's a lot of companies out there making electric vehicles but doing so profitably there's half a handful 
and Tesla's, no pun intended, leading the charge by miles. We're investors, right? This isn't a game of count the companies that offer this product. This is a game of who's making all the fucking money, bro. Sawyer responds, I doubt a bunch of automakers will achieve autonomy at scale profitably at the same time. I mean, it's hard to disagree with that. Tesla still today is one of only a select few making EVs profitably. Egg fucking exactly. He continues, Tesla's revolutionary unbox process will enable industry-leading cost efficiency and thus lower cost rides. He's right, talking about the cyber cab manufacturing system, right? It's a complete revolution, a massive reduction in cost. Gary responds, investors have been saying for years that others will not be able to match Tesla's EV prowess. And by the way, they are correct. Again, who's making all the money selling electric vehicles? It's Tesla and a couple of Chinese companies eking out a tiny little profit. That's it. But Gary's post continues, but here we are with Tesla volumes now down two years in a row, earnings down three years running and EV adoption continues to soar. Now this is, again, talk about missing the forest for the trees. Who's making the money, bro? We are investors, right? Omar's response. And yet Tesla still sold more EVs than any other manufacturer on earth last year and the year before and the year before. Oh, and again, I do want to emphasize and made all the fucking money selling them. Gary responds, it's never winner take all. Even Apple, which has the best cell phone in the world, has just 18% share. In response, a fatal blow from Sawyer. Quote, Apple may hold just 18% of the smartphone market, but the iPhone captures 80% of global smartphone profits and 42% of revenue. Now, again, we're investors, right? Riddle me this. From an investor's point of view, what's what's preferable? Selling 18% of the smartphones on earth or making 80% of the profits selling smartphones on earth already? I'll give you guys some time to think about this because it's a very difficult question. Ready? All right, just pause the video if you can't figure this one out. All right? I mean, call me crazy, but... Uh, I'd probably prefer to be making almost all the fucking profits selling smartphones. But hey, that's just me. Sawyer continues. Tesla's innovative unboxed process will deliver industry-leading cost efficiency. He's right. Enabling the CyberCab to capture a lot of the robo-taxi market profit. This is true. And by the way, just a quick side note. It's not just that Tesla will be able to manufacture the CyberCab for a much lower price point than anyone else can put comparable hardware, e.g. your vehicles can drive autonomously on roads. But that's really important. But it's a triple whammy. It's cost to produce, that's one. But there's two other factors here as well. How quickly these things can actually be manufactured. The CyberCab is not only designed to be able to be manufactured extremely affordably relative to other vehicles, but extremely rapidly. And the third factor here is to be manufactured affordably and rapidly out of a tiny factory footprint. Tesla will not be able to make these things fast enough. And mark my fucking words, make no mistake, most investors are going to completely miss the fact that these are not only designed to be able to be manufactured affordably, but very rapidly from a piss tiny factory footprint. In other words, Tesla's going to be able to rip these things out at crazy rates, insane numbers, in a manner the automotive industry has never seen before. And that'll be their goal. I suspect strongly Tesla's rollout strategy is going to be pick a city, crank out a fuck ton of cyber cabs until you've saturated that city, and between now and then, once you've launched, Tesla owners can supplement some of the robo-taxi fleet in that city while you're still cranking out your cyber cabs with Model 3s and Ys, opting in and opting out. Then move on to the next major city. This is how they'll roll it out. They'll just crank cyber cabs out, saturate a city, move on to the next city, and absolutely dominate. Back to the post. Sure, there might eventually be a bunch of other companies that offer autonomous robo-taxi rides. By the way, there will. But doing so profitably, at scale, will be difficult for most of them. And he's absolutely right. He continues, Tesla has a unique advantage in that they will manufacture their own robotaxis. True. Build the software in-house. True. And host the rides on their own platform slash app. True. Enabling seamless integration and an incredible user experience that will be hard to compete with. Again, uh, no lies detected. His final point, Uber might have 170 million monthly active users. But, by the way, I count myself among these current monthly active users. But if Tesla's robotaxi rides are cheaper and offer a better experience, people will have no problem downloading the Tesla app to gain access. Bro out here is spitting some fucking facts. Transport as a service is comparable to a utility. Your gas provider, your electricity provider, your cell service, your internet provider. You don't give a flying fuck about the name of the company, how pretty their logo is. You give a flying fuck about one, is the service reliable? Does it meet my needs? And most importantly of all, is it affordable? People don't seem to understand. Fundamentally, Tesla's going to have a massive cost advantage. Completely vertically integrated, expertise in manufacturing, a much lower cost to put hardware on roads. If all else is equal, Tesla's going to be able to offer rides at a lower cost per mile. And they will do so. The caveat there being they're not going to have obscene wait time so early on. Cost per mile is probably going to be quite high, but as they scale the service per city, costs are going to come down dramatically. You don't want people waiting too long, right? So that's going to be the limiting factor initially. 
But they've already told us their mission. It's pretty clear. Accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. And the way they do that is by getting more people in Tesla robotaxis, displacing internal combustion engine vehicles on roads. So it's pretty simple here. Tesla's going to scale rapidly, drive costs down per mile, way below what people today pay for an Uber or a Lyft or taxi. And then the rest of the industry is going to try and chase Tesla's prices down, lose money doing so, and then go belly up, kind of like what's happening with electric vehicles right now. I'm just kidding. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Obviously, the experts are going to be right. Everyone's going to compete. There's going to be 10 or 12 companies offering autonomous rides on Uber's platform for comparable prices to Tesla. And everyone's going to get a completely identical sized slice of the pie, most importantly, the profits. <laughs> and just to be clear, Tesla is currently hiring aggressively for cybercab production. Check this out. Some job listings from Tesla. Equipment technician, cybercab, plastics, manufacturing in Austin, Texas. Another one, equipment technician, cybercab. Press, tool and die special, cybercab, we could keep going on. Equipment technician, cybercab, general assembly. Process engineer, cybercab, equipment engineer, cybercab. These things are ending production soon. And remember, cheap to produce, fast to produce, and from a very small factory footprint. Dear nerds, and everyone who isn't a nerd, stick with me. I've taken the liberty of making some estimates, shout out to Grocery, I didn't actually use much of my own brain here, as to how many total rideshare vehicles would be needed Per city in the United States, this is based on existing data for actual ride shares, taxis, Ubers, Lyfts, everything combined, including part-time. I've also added a 25% buffer just to potentially smooth out some of the on-peak and off-peak demand. So focus on this figure here. This is approximately how many Tesla Cybercabs would need to be operating in a single city to completely saturate the entire market and have wait times of maybe just a couple of minutes at most between pulling out the app, hailing a Tesla Cybercab and it arriving. And I've taken the liberty of highlighting a few key cities some of you guys might be familiar with, just to illustrate the point. If Tesla can crank out 30,000 cybercabs in Phoenix, Arizona, bam, market saturated, just 30,000. That's less than the number of vehicles Tesla produces globally today in a week. And remember, these cybercabs are going to be designed to be able to be produced extremely fast. Austin, where the service first launches, let's just round it up and say 20,000 vehicles. San Francisco, 15,000 vehicles, 15,000 cybercabs. And by the way, this isn't to participate in the market. This is to own the entire ride hail market. Now, obviously, the caveat here, we're assuming that it's at today's costs. Costs will come down eventually. There'll be much more demand because more people can afford, but... Stick with me. These are really the numbers Tesla would need to put on the roads to completely destroy Uber, Lyft, and the entire taxi business. If we're just talking about them taking a decent slice, you can cut these numbers down dramatically. Las Vegas, 12,104. Miami, not even 10,000 cybercabs. In fact, we've got roughly the top 100 US cities by population. Total population, about 63 million people. In total, with that 25% buffer, less than 1.25 million cybercabs to completely own 100% of the 100 largest cities in the United States. I do not think people have any appreciation of how massive and rapid this disruption is going to be. Tesla has the experience in rapidly, affordably producing vehicles at scale. The next generation manufacturing system, the Unbox manufacturing system for the Cybercab, is going to allow these things to be cranked out at world record speed for significantly lower costs than anyone else can produce a vehicle, but way faster. And faster is probably the key here, to be honest. Over the long term, cheaper as well, but faster because they can saturate market after market almost instantly. And they'll be able to do these out of existing factories or small new sites, new production lines at existing facilities, a bit of an expansion, bam. And I mean, these things will probably be able to drive themselves to the city they've got to begin operating in too, right? Just take a moment to let this sink in. Now, obviously, you can disagree with these numbers. I mean, do your own research. That's the whole point, right? Don't take my word for it. This isn't even my word. It's basically Grok's word. 1% my brain. 99% grok here. But do you understand? All Tesla needs to do, Austin, first target, get 18,000 cybercabs on the road and you own the whole fucking ride hail market there. Of course, realistically, there's going to be plenty of other companies trying to compete for a slice there. It will take time. They won't even need to put this many on roads before they're absolutely dominating. But that's it. And Tesla cybercab doesn't have any funky new technology in it versus, say, the Cybertruck, which is no one's ever done it before, the exoskeleton. You know what? I'm going to leave you guys with some homework. If you're curious as to how fast the cybercab could ramp, just check out the historical disclosures from Elon on X and elsewhere regarding the number of Model Ys Tesla was producing per week, per month, the annualized production rate as it began to ramp. I have an extremely small brain. That's why I just make content, right? But if you're watching it, then what does that say about you? But I strongly suspect that Tesla's strategy is going to be pretty simple. Pick a few markets, crank cybercabs out, saturate the markets such that people don't have absurd long wait times, then move on to the next market and fucking win. And key to doing that, is their ability to rapidly and affordably produce cybercaps. Any other companies even attempting to solve autonomy that also have expertise in rapid, large-scale production of affordable electric vehicles? Because if not, 
I just don't see a way they're going to be able to compete with Tesla on cost or scale over time. And scale is important. If people have to wait 15, 20 minutes to get a ride in your RoboTaxi, or they can wait three, two minutes, 90 seconds for a Tesla Cybercab, and it's more affordable as well. I mean, bro, it's over. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more, yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect, but even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.